I guess the first question I have for you is what brought you here today? Now that might be a strange question, like, you know, you caught a taxi or you walked here or you stayed in a hotel overnight. That wasn't the question. The question is, what brought you to this point in this room in Kathmandu on a Saturday morning in your lives? What brought you here? What event inspired you to follow this path in your career? I'm going to share with you today one incident that brought me here. So many years ago, I worked for a small little company in South Africa called Anglo-American. It was at the time the largest mining house in South Africa. It was an incredibly hierarchically structured organization. I was what was called a level C4 engineer. Okay? That meant I parked in the third parking lot away from the office. But if I was a level D1 engineer, I would have parked in the second parking lot. That's how hierarchically structured this organization was. So we get back to the airplane. I stand at the hangar, and I'm there in my jeans. And um, I got on the plane, sat in the back, because all my other colleagues on the airplane were dropped off by their drivers, by their chauffeur-driven limousines in fancy fitted suits and Italian shoes. So I felt a little bit out of it. I thought, oh, I'm an engineer. I'm the youngest on the plane. I was 22. I would sit in the back row. I sat in the back row. We took off. And as the pilot put his head around the window and said, the, the cockpit and said, you can move around There's now. There's a box on the floor with drinks in it. I opened the box and I was about to serve drinks and I got a tap on the shoulder. Got a tap on the shoulder and it wasn't the hand of God, thankfully, because we're in an airplane. I got a tap on the shoulder from the most senior director of Anglo-American saying, please don't do that. In our airplanes, the most senior person has to serve the drinks, not the most junior. The most now think about that. In this highly structured, siloed corporation, everything got turned on its head in the confines of the jet. And there started not only my love of flying, but my interest in culture. There started my interest in culture and trying to understand how counterculturally that was running in an organization so heavily defined by its own culture. Purpose is not your vision and mission statement. I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about something that's greater than a vision and mission. Where the organization is going. What is the robust basis for what they do? Why do they start walking around with big smiles or big scars? That's what it comes down to. That middle block, the team, the inspired and diverse team, that's going to be, in every one of your organizations, the most critical factor. So most of the companies I interviewed had this thing called purpose. But a lot of them didn't have purpose, but they had a set of values. How many of your organizations have a value statement on the wall? Yeah, there's something wrong with that. If he as the principal, as this public figure, can't embody those values and put those values out there, then what does it actually mean? So the, the one organization that I interviewed has offices in six countries, three English-speaking, three non-English-speaking. And they have a value set made up of five words. Five words, that's it. And every single employee knows those five words. They, uh, and the first of those words is fun. If you're not having fun, don't work here. Curiosity is, understand how your job fits in with everyone else's job. Understand how your job relates to everyone else so that you can see if you can't deliver how it's going to impact on other people. What is that crossroad we're at? We're at a crossroad of humanity and technology. I started out by asking you, where did you come from? How did you get to this place? How did you get to this place of culture? How did you get to this place on a Saturday morning, listening to me, talking about the future and the future of culture? Don't ever forget how you got to this place. Because if you know how you got here, 
you can work out where you're going. Peter Drucker was often badly quoted as saying that culture ate strategy for breakfast. I titled this talk, If Culture Really Ate Strategy for Breakfast, What's for Dinner? In other words, what's the future? If culture is really driving your organizations into the future, if culture is really that critical component that I believe it is, and those 84 companies that I've interviewed around the world have said it is, then the future of culture is the future of work.